<laughs> okay, so I'm here today just chilling out. Uh, the weather's not that great. And I've been working on some new music. <laughs> I promised you a video, and I think I'm going to make it right now since I've been inspired. I'm on YouTube anyway. I've been inspired to make a video. Um, let me see. This video was about, okay, about going on American Idol. You know, and when people hear, I think the biggest compliment this day, uh, right now, for, for, what, for a singer a lot of times, or people, it seems to be, is, oh my God, you sound great. You should go on American Idol, you know? <laughs> and when, you know, you, I'll go to other people's videos and I'll see, you know, and they'll sound good and everything. And I'll see the people like, oh, well, you should do American, you should do American Idol. And on some of my videos, people are like, wow, man, you should be on American Idol. You know, so like, it's like the big thing right now. And actually, probably when I was growing up, when I was really younger, uh, it was Star Search, and then it was Big Break, and then it was, uh, I mean, you know, it's always been something, um, but now it's American Idol, and um, actually, right, it's, it's the biggest one of them all, and it's probably due to the internet and, and you know, all of that, the, the cell phones and all that good stuff, but for whatever reason, okay, so, there are many reasons why I should not go on American Idol. <laughs> And I just want to talk about a few of those reasons. Um, one, you know on American Idol they have an age requirement. And when they first started out, it was I think it was 24 was the top age and I think 16 was the, the youngest you could be. And I think now it's 16 to 29. And uh, even when they pushed it to 29, I'm over 30. Okay, I'm very happy to have been here 30 something years. And you don't all need to know exactly 30 what, but I am over 30. And so that's one reason why I should not go on American Idol. Two, lines. You know when you go to these American Idol auditions, if anybody's been there, they have people there three, four days in advance, you know. And I'm in New York, and even when I came to New York and I started auditioning, I would see these lines and lines and lines of people auditioning for shows just for paying gigs, you know. And... I, sometimes I would stand in line or whatever and do my thing, especially when I very, very, very first started. But once I started getting gigs and started talking to people, then I would start going out and it would be like, okay, I know people are going to be there six in the morning, but if I'm there that long, I've warmed up my voice in the morning, I stand out in the cold or the rain or whatever waiting to get in, I sign up. And after all this time, you're so tired that you don't do well at the audition. So I decided, you know what? I'll go, you know, maybe like when the audition, I'll plan on being there when the doors open. So that even if there are really long lines, I'm only staying there as long as, you know, necessary. And I think if I went to an American Idol audition <laughs> and I saw people there and they'd been there for days already, I'd be like, forget this. <laughs> it's not worth it to me. Um, and it's worth it to some people, and that's great, and I'm glad, and I'm happy. But to me, I don't know if it would ever be worth it. Um, and getting gigs, you know what, it's never stood in the way. I've always gotten in, even if I had to do my audition at 6 o'clock, you know, one of the last people, um, after they've seen people all day, I, hey, I have many times actually gotten a job where I was there, you know, I showed up late, and... You know, I was there to do my thing at the time that I was supposed to, and I've actually gotten the job. So, you know, sometimes it's not the early bird, it's the, the one that they're looking for, the most talented, or the one that fits into whatever they're looking for at the time. Um, their contract, I have heard from people who have done the audition, and um, people who have, have had the contract that it is so extensive and they own so much of you yes um there's always this thing of you know 10 percent of a lot is better than you know 100 percent of nothing but there are so many people that get into the contract and you know and actually we've seen several people get out of it now um like uh what what uh, uh what is it hicks not taylor here not not here, but actually I think they fired him. Um, um, what is his name? Uh, that went up against Ruben Studdard. I can't even remember his darn name. But also uh, the guy who did Gallery. Uh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, they got out of the contract. However they did it, you know, they got lawyers and whatever. And got out of the contract. But it's such an extensive contract. And if you want to be in the business, you can do it without all of that. But for some people, you know, for those who are making it, you know, into the top and who are winning or being in the top 12, 
there's a lot that goes along with it. There's a lot of celebrity. There's a lot of, um, of, of exposure. And that's the good thing about it. But for me, uh, it's not necessary. I, I've always planned uh, since I was young to do this for a living for the rest of my life. Um, and with that... The amount of stardom that I have is not so important. What matters to me is being on kind of an even keel and continuing to grow as an artist and maybe to get more followers, to sell more music, um, to do bigger and better jobs, you know, for bigger and better money, naturally. But also being able to pick and choose what I want to do and what I don't want to do or what position I want to be in and what position I don't want to be in. Um, so the American Idol, I don't think would work for me because of that, because of the contract. Also, competition. This is the big thing with me because, you know, um, I felt like David Archella was the best in the competition and a lot of people did. David Cook won and I wish him all the best. But I have not always been the best competition person. And when I was younger, I used to always say that I would do a wonderful job, but I always lost out first place to some big black woman singing, and I'm telling you, <laughs> and it was always the running joke, you know, I would always play second or third, and I, you know, I would wonder why, 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 and for me, I was happy because, hey, at least I placed, I beat out, you know, maybe 100 people, maybe 20 people, uh, but play, placing second or third is not such a bad thing. But, you know, when you actually are in it and you really want to win, it's not the best thing because you want to be first. Um, but, but, because of that, I tend not to do competitions so much anymore. Um, and because a lot of the, uh, of the auditions or the competitions are amateur contests, and I, I'm already a professional making money at it, um, making a living at it. I generally don't consider going into the contest. Now, there are things like uh, writing competitions that I have submitted to. There are some little competitions that I'll submit more for the exposure than to win. Um, but when it comes down to something like American Idol, you really want to go to win. And it is probably a little disappointing if you don't win. Um, also with the competition thing, you know, being second or third sometimes is not the worst thing because sometimes I think the people who continue to place first in competitions, they often feel like they don't really have to work for it. And a lot of times um, when you know that you have to work harder, you generally get further. You know, in high school, a good friend of mine was actually the number one male singer um, in school, in the School of Arts, and I was considered number two male singer. But uh, when it came down to, like, the end of the year, you know, doing graduation and they were voting for, you know, who's going to be, you know, most popular, most this and most that, I ended up being the most likely to succeed, and I was blown away because I thought that, you know, my friend would definitely, because he was like the most popular male singer, would be, you know, voted. But for some reason, I think it more had to do with a whole roundabout thing, because I was into singing, I was into acting, I was into dancing, I was writing. Um, I also was, you know, the best academic, you know, I'm, I, mean, I was number four in my class. And actually, to this day, there's no one in my class that has actually been doing this for a living the way I have. Um, and there's no one, there are a few people in my school that I've seen that are doing things, you know, wait, it's not such a bad thing always to finish second or third because you are in the top and there are so many talented people. Um, also, in the long run, first is not always first. Let me say that. Um, we can see that, uh, some people have had much larger careers than some of the winners on American Idol. That's not because the person who won shouldn't have won. That's because the people who, who were, went out earlier than they thought they should have realized or possibly realized that they had to work harder than they were working. They had to um, be more present than they were during the competition. They realized that even though they felt like they were doing their best, that maybe they had to do more than just be a good performer in order to win at life. And I think it's, it's pretty much the same thing with life. It's often those people who realize that, listen, maybe I'm not the best. Maybe I'm not perfect. Maybe I'm not as good as so-and-so. But if I work hard and I become the best that I can be, I can still excel and have the life that I want to have.